Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic Steel Gunner. Steel Gunner is a first person shooter that was developed by Namco in 1990. Even though it says 1990, it wasn't released until March of 1991. Now, I remember first playing this game at a movie theater, and it was amazing. I loved this game from the start. It was like a light gun super scaling game. I mean, before Steel Gunner, the only light games I can clearly remember playing was Operation Wolf and Thunderbolt. But it couldn't compare with this game. This game was crazy and fast paced, really action packed. But somehow, for some reason, the game's pretty obscure. I don't even think that it has any home ports, but playing light gun games on emulators can be torture. It's just not the same without the actual gun. Also, I can't stress this enough, but the game came out in March of 1991, one month after Street Fighter 2 came out, so naturally, this would be another great game that will ultimately be a victim of the 2D fight genre. In this game, you play as either Garcia or Cliff, a couple of mecked out cops, part of a special anti-terrorist group called Steel Gunner. You are tasked to rescue the foremost expert on robotics Dr. Ryan and his assistant Dr. Ellis. Liberate Neo Ark City from a terrorist group called Sturm and uncover their secret weapon. You have to battle your way through four stages before your final showdown with Sturm's leader, Gash Bernard. At your disposal, you have a machine gun with unlimited ammo with a limited amount of missiles. Careful with the missiles though because they can destroy everything on screen including bystanders. Occasionally these bystanders will appear running across the screen. If they're able to make it across, some of your health gets replenished. If you accidentally shoot them though, you lose health. Now I should backtrack a bit, Steel Gunner is technically not a light gun game, it's actually a positional gun game, meaning that the cabinet is mounted on a swivel that allows the player to aim the gun. Think of it as putting a toy gun on top of an analog controller. Namco, I think in a strange attempt to boost sales or maybe save themselves money, offered a kit which if you had an existing Operation Thunderbolt cabinet, you could convert it into Steel Gunner, as seen in this flyer. Normally I wouldn't compare the three because the games are thematically different from one another, but in my opinion, Steel Gunner is way better than Operation Wolf and Thunderbolt. However, Operation Wolf and Thunderbolt are not obscure titles. They're pretty popular in the arcades in comparison to Steel Gunner. The thing is that Namco made a mistake by not porting it over to any home systems. I find that when companies do that, they might as well buy a one-way ticket to Obscurity Island because the game will be forgotten. Even if it's a cool game like this one, but part of my motivation for these reviews is to uncover hidden gems and review somewhat obscure titles that may have been overlooked for some reason or another. And I feel like Steel Gunners is one of those titles and I say if you get the chance, take a trip to Obscurity Island, play this game and let me know what you think.